Yeah, that, uh, so the funny thing was yesterday um, I came into that. I, I felt kind of bad after the game, but I just thought, like, usually after the game, my stomach, you know, from all the energy and stuff from the game, my stomach was bubbling. But then I came in the training room, and they said, you like, four guys have gone home throwing up. I was like, man, that's crazy. Like, my stomach even bothered me, too. So I went through our practice. I ran in our practice. I did the lift and everything. I was, like, dying during the lift. I kept, like, bending over. And then I was leaving out of the shower, and next thing I know, I take a step to the right and just, ugh. Like, all the breakfast I had just went everywhere. And so I went in, they told me to go straight home, ended up uh, feeling it again that night. And uh, it was really bad. I had my roommates uh, kind of help me get some fluids in my body. So, I mean, for me, I'm glad. Like last time last year in the Western Kentucky game, I had gotten sick the Friday and we played at Saturday at like 2.30. So like for me to do this, I should be, you know, I'm already feeling better back to strength by now. Um, we have practice, you know, granted for us, everything happens for a reason. We have practice on a Sunday, which we usually don't have, and we have Monday off. So I'm kind of glad it worked out that way so that when I come into Tuesday, I'll be about 100%. I can just be able to focus on getting ready for Law Tech. So. Um, I haven't watched the film with um, my coaches, myself, because like I said yesterday, I went home early and I was sick. Um, from my own, just watching it myself, I noticed that there was like some gap assignments. Me personally, I can't speak on everybody else on the team because that's not my uh, place to do so. But um, I know for myself personally, there was a couple of gap assignments that I missed um, completely. You know, certain things that were rooted to Mary, um, things that I've done like over and over and over again. That was just basics that I, I messed up on, um, especially in the second half uh, where they gashed us with a long run down the middle, and that was my gap. And for some reason, I was in the C gap. Um, and I played that completely wrong. Um, and it was, and then from what the gist is from what I'm getting for everybody else, is that there's sort of things like that that we kind of abandoned our basics in that second half, and that we have to stick to that unless we'll let teams score 44 points on us. So, uh, I mean, nah, not really. I mean, every offense in the country is now running the spread, except for, like as Coach said, the academies. The, they run the triple option, and that's pound and pound and pound and disciplinary stuff. Um, I mean, if you look at our schedule, every team we're going to play is running a high-powered offense. And the fact that they have playmakers in the, for La Tech, um, number one and number five, those are pretty dynamic guys that they try to get the ball to. Um, I've watched the film initially of their game against FIU last week. They kept throwing them the ball. And they obviously are athletes that can make things happen, so they're going to get them the ball in any situation they can and let them work. So that's just something that comes in with the, today's offenses. Oh, uh, that was that was cool. Uh, you know, like you know, it was, it was a cool thing. I uh, haven't had one since I was in high school, so uh, it was it was a it was a cool feeling. But uh, most importantly, it was getting a turnover for the team and then able to get our offense back on the field so that they can score points. That's what we need at the end of the day. Our coach has been preaching to us turnovers, turnovers, and turnovers. So for me to be able to uh, do that, the bigger picture is allowing for our offense to be able to score some points and put some points on the board. So that was the the main main part of that. Oh yeah. Uh, usually he's slinging the ball all the time, but for him to go out there and go uncovered and just catch one and walk into the end zone was a pretty cool thing. I didn't know he had hands like that, to be honest. So, um, yes, sir. So, as far as the, the closeness and the bondness, that's something that happens as the season goes. You work out with each other during the summertime. You get to get more acclimated with everybody that you're going to, and you start to figure out how people tick. You start to think about how they're thinking of plays and seeing how you can respond so you play off with calls with each other. And um, one of the things that was preached to us throughout the whole entire time when we were in that, you know, the week before this, when we were in that losing stint, was that at the end of the day, um, there's nobody else you're going to have. Nobody else is looking at you. You're going to look at media, and media's going to be telling you, you know, 0-6, oh, they're not doing this. 0-6, oh, they're not doing that. So at the end of the day, you can't look for outside influences to help you bond together and make plays. You have to look within each other. And so that's what we have is uh, – a great commodity between the teammates um, on the defensive side of the ball for sure. I know for us, it's like, all right, we'll say this play call's not working or say something's not working. So you, you go and you talk to him to get his perspective on it and not just simply say, well, well, that's just not going to work. Well, who cares? You know, you ask your next teammate because at the end of the day, when it comes to the crunch time, you don't have a coach who's on the field with you. You don't have anybody in fans, your mother, or your father on the field with you. You have your teammates, those are your brothers, and that's what you have to go through and grind out to make, you know, crucial plays throughout the game with. So. Yeah, I mean, I feel for some people, um, for me personally, it's, it's always just 
no matter what the outcome is, every single game you got to give your all and give everything that you can to play. Um, but if I know for sure for some people, it's kind of like, all right, well, we got one in our belt. Let's continue to make this thing go. We're supposed to be going on a run so we can get to a bowl game. Obviously, we missed one last year. So that means that we got to continue to do what we did and then eliminate you know, mistakes that we had so that we can be able to be better. And so now the thing we're trying to trace is now perfection, you know, getting iron out those mistakes and being able to get better so we can prepare ourselves to be in a, a good situation come December. Yeah, I mean, you don't just come out here just to play to – to play, I always say everybody's trying to get in the postseason. Sitting at home at Christmas is a really difficult thing, and you watching around, you seeing people that you played against, who you know sometimes you feel you might be better than um, playing in a bowl game, and you know that kind of hurts you. You know, for me it, last year that was one of the most difficult times, just sitting in that situation. Um, so you definitely don't want to be sitting at home. Uh, uh, get a lot of fluids in you, coach. Uh, I got on my knees and prayed to God last night because I could have swore I was about to die. Uh, so uh, get you some fluids in you, uh, bread, uh, I guess it's bread, rice, and uh, toast is the thing they said to eat. So that's what I've been eating, and uh, I'm getting back to strength. So hopefully it will be with us tomorrow, Tuesday.